Hey everyone, what is going on? My name is Brian. Welcome back to the channel. And as the title describes, we're gonna take a look at the top whiskey that I've tasted and scored so far this year. No, it is not a bourbon and it is not a rye. Before we get into that, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Help me continue to grow the channel here in 2023. And like I said, this is not a bourbon, this is not a rye. This comes from the folks at Rare Character. And we've seen single barrel picks all over the place uh, from this brand popping up last year into this year. You might have seen this video that I did where I just kind of tasted through some of these things. And we're gonna talk about a bottle that I actually read about towards the end of last year, but only got a chance to try towards the beginning of this year. It comes in a bottle like this. It comes from the Exceptional Series, and this is a Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey. Now, not everything that comes in the Exceptional Series is going to be one of these Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskeys, but we're starting to see more of them come on to the market at eight years, nine years, 11 years, 12 years old, and then this one, which is 14 and a half years old. We've seen several different expressions kind of go out. So with them being single barrels, no, your miles may vary if you come across one of these out in the wild, but it is a very different mash bill than we're used to seeing. 65% malt barley, 35% corn. Some of them up into the very high proofs. And it's just something a little bit different yet has flavors that are familiar. So we're gonna get into this particular pick. This comes from Liquor Junction and Mass Bourbon Alliance. This particular barrel I was incredibly fond of. There was another 14 year that I tried and I really liked it but then putting it up against this one, this one just had so much more flavors that I really enjoy. So again, I've noticed across the barrels that I've tried at the various ages, there's different through lines, there's different flavors, but overall, as someone who, one who's been interested in, in kind of seeing what the, what the new malted categories or the single malts here over in the States are, are, are coming out with, what they're doing, these different brands, uh, it's just interesting to explore. And now that I'm trying to get away from bourbon or rye i'm still very much a bourbon drinker but that's what impressed me the most in regards to this pour. let's go ahead and dive into the nose we'll just talk through it as we taste oh man right away it has this really enjoyable kind of butterscotch sweetness on the nose it dives into these darker richer aromas kind of leather espresso it it isn't all that unfamiliar uh to king of kentucky in that regard here on the nose has these dense kind of vanilla coated red fruits in there, dried fruits in there. It's kind of a honey glaze to it, but it is got some slight spice in there, nuanced spice in there. Again, as I mentioned, kind of well extracted espresso, thick, heavy, and then a lot of that leather. Let's go ahead and dive in here on the palate. This is somewhere in the 130s of the proof. I think my bottle's marked a little bit differently, so I don't exactly know. Actually, the legs are a little quick moving on the glass, but let's go ahead and dive in here for a taste. Ah, man, so good. It's really intense. The flavor is, is big. Fans of Proprietor 14 from Lucky 7. Fans of maybe your high proof bean products, high proof Barton products. And I say that because those two brands specifically, they can run into really high heat and there's a slight kind of spice. You kind of get that burn a little bit with them, maybe more than some other products at that age. I feel like you get a little bit of the heat here. You can definitely tell it's got some of that heat versus say like a brown form. And I've definitely had some kind of heated brown foreman products, namely when I'm, you know, I think of King of Kentucky at this sort of age but also we can look at maybe the old forester president's choice line uh, that's one where i feel like you get a lot of really interesting mature brown form and characteristics maybe a little bit of heat that goes with it but this has kind of very similar flavor pocket similar notes similar heft with a little bit of that heat still carrying through deep soaked in brown sugar and chocolate right away the brown sugar and vanilla, honestly, kind of throw me back to older George T. Staggs a little bit. And I know that's it's hard to explain. Anyone who isn't familiar with those, they may not understand it, but if you have tried them, 
and you try this, I think you'll get it. There's a there's a, a way that the heaviness, that the thickness of the kind of brown sugar vanilla lay on the tongue and, and kind of just approach the palate. And you notice that here. That said, it's still creamy, beautiful. Milk chocolate notes, leather notes, espresso notes, dark cherry notes. It has a such a creamy linger of of oak and, and sweetness. They are kind of in harmony. Uh, as it finishes on the tongue, it's slightly perfumed, which I notice kind of sometimes in dusty pours. I also note it in, it, notice it in some specific older aged modern pours. It's got some complex spiciness to it. It's not overly exaggerated, heavy, candied, sweet, like an Ambarana finish. But some of the layers remind me of some of the similar flavors if you kind of tone down the, the volume of that a little bit. It still has this kind of musty, kind of dry or nutty funk. Maybe this comes from the malt barley. That kind of reminds me of old turkey, old beam a little bit in that regard. This is buttery, sweet, just really enjoyable whiskey right here. I don't think I knew what to expect when it came to this product. And maybe it would be wiser to actually do a head to head with it and some older aged bourbons. If you're interested in seeing that, leave me a comment down below. Let me know that you're interested in seeing that. Maybe I'll do that in an upcoming video. And I think it doesn't have, especially at 14 and a half years old, all the oak characteristics picked up that maybe some older aged bourbons do. And for that, I think people who don't uh, want something that has the tendency of getting over oaked will really enjoy this pour. Someone who likes very heavy, very concentrated flavors in their whiskey and maybe likes the, the flavor pocket, the kind of really saturated lower tones. To me, it, it really runs into the kind of a similar flavor pocket as the, again, the old stags of the King of Kentucky. Maybe lacking a little bit of width, a little bit of complexity, but there's something about the kind of leather and oak that's in here that is only reminiscent of certain pores. And, and, and this one is certainly reminding me of that. Definitely one that grows and, and comes alive a lot more the more you sip it. So if anyone has the, the fortune of finding one of these bottles, specifically one of the older aged ones, I highly recommend you open it. I really think you're gonna enjoy the experience that you get. So that's a little something different. Again, rare characters, Kentucky straight malt whiskey. I'm only saying this because I, I haven't really seen much else about it, uh, but I think you're going to see more people talking about this in the future. And I would assume you would hear more people talk about this towards the end of 2023 as well. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in for yet another video. I hope this was informational. I hope it was interesting to you all. Let me know if you've had any of the Rare Character Exceptional series. Let me know if you've had any of these Kentucky straight malt whiskeys and what your thoughts have been on them down below in the comments. Let me know if there's anything else you wanna hear me make a video of or other content you wanna hear coming up on the channel. Thanks for tuning in as always, everybody. And until next time, we'll see you all later.